Welcome to Infosense Education and in this video we were using the ultrasonic for finding the velocity of sound in liquid and also for determining the compressibility and bulk modulus of the liquid used. First we can look the aim of this experiment. To determine the velocity of sound in different liquids using ultrasonic waves and hence to calculate the compressibility and bulk modulus at the given liquid. Now we are moving to the apparatus required for this experiment. First, we need piezoelectric crystal, RF oscillator, given liquid, spectrometer, sodium vapor lamp, scale and telescope. So, these were the main apparatus required for this experiment. Now, we are moving to the theory of this experiment. So, here we are finding the velocity of sound through liquid. So, the equation is velocity of sound through the liquid V equal to nu into lambda dash, where lambda dash equal to n lambda by sin theta. Nu is the frequency of the ultrasonic sound waves and lambda dash is the wavelength of the ultrasonic sound wave and the n is the order and lambda is the wavelength of the sodium vapor lamp which we are using. And here we are also finding the bulk modulus and compressibility of the liquid which we are using. So the equation for bulk modulus equal to k equal to rho into v square and compressibility which is the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. So, compressibility E equal to 1 by K where V is the velocity of sound wave and rho is the density of the liquid used. Here we are finding the density of the liquid using the Hayes apparatus. Now we are moving to the observation column. This is the tabulation column which we are recording the observation. The first column we are recording which liquid we are using. In this video we are using the CCL4 solution and second column is for recording the frequency of the oscillator so it is recording on the megahertz range and third column represent the order of the diffraction pattern which is formed and next column is for recording the telescope reading there we are recording the left reading and also the right reading that were the readings of the diffraction patterns which are formed and then next column is for recording the shifted 2s and from that we can calculate the sine theta which is equal to s by 2d here S is the shift and D is the distance between scale and the spectrometer and lambda dash equal to n lambda by sin theta. These were the tabulation column which we are using. Now we can start the experiment. So procedure of this experiment. Before doing any type of spectrometer experiment, you have to do some preliminary adjustment. That is, the slit should be clearly seen to the telescope of the spectrometer and the slit should be clear and a narrow one. So, if that is not clear and narrow, try to focus using the adjustment screws in the telescope. So, now you can see at the top right corner of this screen, that is the telescope view which you are seen through the spectrometer. That when you are looking, you can see that the slit is very narrow and clear. So, you can proceed to the experiment. Next step is to arrange the scale and telescope and the distance between the spectrometer and the scale should be 1 meter. It should be clearly noted that the distance between the scale and the telescope should be 1 meter and you have to observe the scale through the telescope clearly. After this arrangement, we can proceed to the experiment. For doing this experiment, you have to place a glass tank to the prism table and you have to fill the glass tank with the organic compound which we are using. In this experiment, we are using CCL4 solution. So, first you have to transfer the CCL4 solution from the bottle to the glass jar. Try to use a dropper for transferring the CCL4 solution. So now we have transferred the CCL4 solution to the glass jar. Now we have to place the piezoelectric crystal to the glass jar for producing the ultrasonic waves or aquagrating. So as shown here, try to place the piezoelectric crystal to the glass jar. You have to always ensure that the piezoelectric crystal should be directly dipped to the organic solution. 
if it is not properly dip on the solution there will be no aqua gratings formed so it will affect our experiment so always ensure that the piezoelectric crystal is completely immersed on the organic compound which we are filled on the glass jar so initial arrangements are over now we have to switch on the r force later for producing high frequency sine wave we have to tune the rf oscillator to the crystal frequency then only the gratings or ultrasonic waves will be produced on the crystal it is always noted that the crystal frequency is about 4 to 4.2 megahertz range so try to tune the rf oscillator to in between 4 to 4.2 while the frequency reaches the crystal frequency there will be diffraction patterns will be formed now when you look to the eyepiece you can see that a diffraction pattern is formed so there is a central zeroth order fringe so this is the central zeroth order fringe and left side first order and left side second order and on the right side you can see the right side first order fringe and also on the right side you can see the second order fringe so these were the fringes formed while we are tuning the RF oscillator to the crystal frequency. For taking the readings, you have to place the cross wire on the first order fringe and also on the second order fringe on the left side and also on the right side. You can use this screw for doing that. So now our cross wire is placed on the central zeroth order. Now you have to move it to the left first order. So we have moved the cross wire to the first order that is the telescope is moved to the left first order fringe now you can look the readings on the telescope you can use this key for adjusting the view of the telescope by adjusting that you can get a clear image of the scale now we are getting the scale reading as 15.1 centimeter you can note it on the tabulation column this is the telescope view so you can record it on the left side first order column and next we are moving it to the left side second order fringe now the crosswire is placed on the left side second order fringe so this is the left side second order fringe and you can take the reading using the telescope arrangement so now we are getting the reading as 14.6 centimeter so you can also note this on the tabulation column which is noted on the left side second order tabulation column so now we are moving to the right side first order so now the cross wire is placed on the right side first order fringe so take the reading so take the reading using the scale and telescope arrangement so now we are getting the reading as 16.3 centimeter you can also note this on the right side first order column so you can note this value to the right side first order column now we are moving the cross wire to the right side second order so the cross wire is placed on the right side second order fringe now take the readings so now we are getting it as 16.5 centimeter so we have take all the four readings that is first order and second order we have taken left and right readings now we are moving to the observation and calculation so this is the observation so we have to find the shift 2s so for a ccl4 solution we are getting the shift 2s as for first order it is 1.2 and for the second order it is 1.9 and sin theta equal to s by 2d where d is the distance between scale and telescope which is 1 meter by substituting these values we are getting sin theta equal to 0.3 and 0.4 respectively for first and second order and by using the equation lambda dash equal to n lambda by sin theta you can calculate the lambda dash by substituting n equal to 1 for the first set reading and the lambda is the wavelength of the sodium vapor lamp used which is equal to 589.3 nanometer and by substituting the sine theta value you are getting for first order the lambda dash equal to 1.964 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter and for the second order you are getting lambda dash equal to 2.507 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter respectively so we have to find the mean lambda dash for ccl4 which is equal to 2.2335 into 10 raised to minus 4 
from this column we got the lambda dash for ccl4 which is 2.2355 into 10 raised to minus 4 so velocity v equal to nu into lambda dash of ccl4 which is equal to 4 into 10 raised to minus 6 that is 4 megahertz into 2.2335 into 10 raised to minus 4 that is we are getting the velocity as 938.7 meter per second that is the velocity of ultrasonic sound wave through the ccl4 equal to 938.7 meter per second and the density of ccl4 rho equal to 1615.64 kilogram per meter cube that is approximate value and for finding the bulk modulus you have to substitute the velocity and density the equation of bulk modulus that is k equal to v square rho by substituting and simplification we are getting the bulk modulus as 1.41966 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square and as you know the compressibility is the reciprocal of bulk modulus and we are getting the compressibility as 0.7043 into 10 raised to minus 9 newton inverse meter square so these are the things which we have to find using this experiment that is the velocity of sound and the bulk modulus of the liquid and the compressibility of the liquid used so we are moving to the result part of this experiment so here we have to record all the result which we have find during this experiment that is the velocity of ultrasonic wave in ccl4 equal to 938.7 meter per second and the bulk modulus of ccl4 which is equal to 1.41966 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square and the compressibility of ccl4 which is equal to 0 0.7043 into 10 raised to minus 4 newton inverse meter square so i think all of you understand this experiment for more information and video you can visit our website www.infosenseeducation.blogspot.com we can see you on the next video still then thanks for watching